right, I'm going to, I just have a couple of concluding remarks uh, before we get to our President's Forum. I wanted to thank the fellow members of the Planning Committee once again. Uh, this was a group effort. So I want to thank Kelly Brownell, Barbara Hansen, Gil Oman, Ted Polanski, and Al Reese for their service and their work on this committee. Thank you. While they're getting mic'd up, let me um, just make a couple of concluding comments and reflections on what we heard today. And actually, I've, I'd like to return to our first two keynote presentations. Dr. Dietz showed maps showing the rapid change in rates of obesity and diabetes in the last 30 years. Though that may seem rapid, Dr. Chan described it as a slow-moving epidemic. Drawing on Dr. Gearhart's excellent observations about evolutionary processes, one of the evolutionary processes is that people tend to, tend to attend to fast-moving threats, not to slow-moving threats. And that may account to some extent for why we've had a somewhat anemic response to these epidemics, as Dr. Chan described. I'd like to point out that we did a few experiments in today's meeting, I think some of which were clearly a great success. Um, and one of them was really mixing up the disciplines on the panels. So we had really the whole range of disciplines and different perspectives on, on the given panels. And I think it shows how important this kind of interdisciplinary engagement is, and it's going to be important not only for advancing our science, but advancing our policy. So with that, let me turn it over to Victor for the President's Forum. First, let me say, uh, Nancy, we are grateful to you. What an outstanding meeting put together, and your committee. Yes, one more round. I wish we had more time to, as you said, summarize and even debate further. But given the, uh, the uh, late of the day, we should go going to the next, the final panel. Um, last year, you remember, we introduced this new idea of a presence forum. Simply to say, we should have a session that takes maybe the hottest, latest topic and, uh, you know, and have a great opportunity to discuss interact and learn from each other. And because we took last year's aging, which turns out to be a great topic, you heard me today talking about this could be our first Grand Challenge initiative. Uh, well, this time, uh, a year ago, we recognized that, uh, in fact, we're going to have an election. That election is going to occur from now on, about three weeks from now. And so it's very appropriate for the NAM, its council, and its members to say, really, we should be working uh, towards thinking about how to inform the next US administration about where the future directions are. And hence, you heard me talk about today the initiative called Vital Direction in Health and Healthcare. So you heard me talking about why we do this. And of course, the idea is to identify policy opportunities and actions that could really yield timely progress towards three overarching goals for the US. Better health and well-being, high value health care, and strong science and technology. And of course, what we were very lucky is to first create a leadership group and recruited Mark McClellan, my good friend, to co-chair with me, and a uh, steering committee uh, of outstanding individuals. And I will just simply show you those individuals which I want to take a minute to thank because I didn't have time this morning. But many of them are in fact sitting right here. Uh, people who are highly experienced, health policy, health experts, nurses, physicians, patients, science, and so on and so forth. And this, com this really steering committee in a way, put together the whole program of saying, what do we need to meet those three goals? 
and what kind of papers do we need to commission uh, in order to advance some of these ideas. And you heard me talk about the fact that, in fact, we uh, had three themes and 19 papers, and we published these papers as perspective discussion papers and also in JAMA. Uh, about a month ago, we had a major national conversation here, right here, and of course, right now, this group, active group, is writing a synthesis paper to bring it together as we think about how to move forward. And that's part of our conversation today. Now, Mark and I are going to do a tag team today. That is to say that he's going to tee up the importance of having uh, vital directions for health and healthcare. Then I'm going to introduce our uh, great panel and ask them each to say three to five minutes worth of their perspective, and then Mark is going to take over and generate that discussion. So Mark? Great. Thank you, Victor. And uh, let me uh, add my thanks as well to the participants in this effort, uh, many National Academy members, uh, other experts. In addition, we are looking for input from uh, the broader public and, and other members of the Academy as well uh, right now. So if there are ideas that you have, we're going to have a chance to talk about them today, and we would like to, to hear from you. Uh, as Victor said, there, there are a lot of opportunities now to improve the way that uh, uh, we're thinking about uh, approaching health issues in this country. And with his leadership, uh, I think the National Academy is going to play an even stronger role in doing Doing it. Um, this may seem like a, a, a difficult task where there seems such like such partisan division in the U.S., but as I think you'll see, there are a number of areas where there is a, actually a strong amount of broad-based uh, uh, bipartisan support for Steps for Action. And I think that begins with, I don't know if you've got the, the clicker, Victor, but uh, that begins with uh, the really the core challenge. A lot of policymakers in Washington, when they think about health, they think about health care. They think about things like uh, very important efforts like the cancer moonshot, building on progress that we've seen over the past decades, leading to tremendous improvements in outcomes for diseases ranging from cardiovascular disease to uh, HIV AIDS, which has been transformed in my own uh, uh, career, uh, to uh, uh, now significant reductions in cancer population mortality rates. I mean, they think that tend to think about this in terms of the medical care, and we're trying to broaden that focus, and this is part of the reason. Uh, this is a chart showing the three things that the federal government spends money on. Uh, the blue part is the Social Security program, which with the retirement of the baby boom is going up by about 1% of GDP uh, over the next 20 years. That's the vertical axis. The red part is the health care program, so that's Medicare, Medicaid, and now the new subsidies for health insurance and the ACA. And the light blue-gray is everything else. So all of those things that we were talking about in the last session, uh, spending uh, uh, to support a better, healthier environment, uh, spending on research and development, spending on low-income assistance programs, all of that has been steadily getting squeezed down. And this is built into the way we set our national priorities. The so-called sequestration rules that govern the federal budget uh, have prioritized continued increased spending on the health care entitlements uh, and continued squeezes on a lot of these other types of services. And this is a chart from uh, Betsy Bradley at, at Yale's work uh, showing where the U.S. fits in terms of uh, social service uh, and health care spending. So the broad set uh, of uh, public programs at the federal level, and this includes state and private as well, that could have an impact on population health outcomes. Uh, the U.S. is not an outlier in terms of total uh, social and welfare spending. We are very much an outlier in terms of our distribution of that spending, though with much more, the blue is health care uh, and the red is other social services. And you saw that reflected in the last chart as well. And as we've been discussing today, if you think about the factors that are most important for population health, health care is important. I think it's even getting more important with further progress in genomics and much more predictive and uh, preventive medicine. But there are so many other factors, uh, including uh, individual behavior, uh, the uh, social, uh, social uh, uh, and uh, 
environmental factors that, uh, uh, that influence outcomes that also play a very big role. And so our reports are really focused on finding and acting on the many unfulfilled opportunities for better health, higher value care, stronger science and innovation. Uh, we have some of them listed on this slide, but uh, I'd like to turn to our panel and, and Victor to uh, go through these in a bit more detail. Sure, Mark. This morning, actually, I managed to give them an eye chart that had all the 19 papers. I don't know if they saw that or not, but at least I covered some of that. So I, I'm really glad that you've captured many of this here. Well, 